when two former college lovers set off on a trip of a lifetime. They have no idea they'll end up fighting for their lives. Lost in the rainforest without food or water. Snake. They're easy prey to predators. Is there something out there? With no hope of rescue. I think we should just slash our wrists. They decide to take their own lives. We were going to die out there. Having control over when we die is all that we had. The Amazon rainforest in Brazil. It's one of the last great wilderness areas, home to the largest variety of insects, birds, and mammals in the world. For Dave Boyer and Crystal Ramsey, it's the trip of a lifetime. Can you believe it? We're actually here in the Amazon. Hey, you know when I make a promise, I keep it. It's the realization of a dream they shared two years ago when they were a couple. Crystal and I dated for about three years and really were the closest you could possibly be. One day we were talking about our passions and I asked her the question, if you could go any one place in the world, where would that be? And the Amazon was number one for both of us. Dave and Crystal aren't together anymore, but they are still close friends. There was no one I would have rather gone with than him. Dave knows that Crystal has had a long-standing struggle with depression. In school, where I met Dave, I had a very bad time with depression. Dave thinks this trip will be good for her, but he's also nursing a secret hope that it might just reignite their romance. She was the love of my life. I still envisioned spending the rest of my life with her. They've traveled almost 200 miles south from the Brazilian city of Manaus to one of the Amazon's remotest backwaters. They plan to spend two months exploring the region. Their base, a small lodge in the heart of the rainforest. Around it is a network of clearly marked forest trails. Dave and Crystal spend their first two days checking out the shorter ones. Then they decide they're ready to take on the longest. It's known as the White Trail and it stretches three miles deep into virgin rainforest. Dave and Crystal set off in the morning with enough water for a three hour hike. We left just before 10 o'clock and expected to be back in time for a lunch, late, a late lunch. They've spent two years reading up on the rainforest, but nothing prepares them for the real thing. As soon as we went in, we started to see more than we had ever seen before, such as bats and different kind of bugs than we had ever seen, and it was a fantastic morning. I was really excited. Dave, look. We had tunnel vision. We were focused on one thing, and I was exploring and seeing the rainforest. We were oblivious to any dangers that were involved. They are so absorbed by the sights and sounds of the forest, they don't notice that they've stepped off the marked trail. Our awareness was elsewhere. It was on the trees, on the animals, on the sounds. They are now following paths made by animals. As we got further along, the jungle seemed to creep in on each side. We now had to walk in a single file line. Then the path completely disappears. For the first time, they realize they're no longer on the trail. That's when that's when I didn't know what to do. I was really worried. Let's see the map. I think I forgot the map at the lodge. 
I had left the map sitting on the dresser in our cabin. Dave. Look, I... I can remember it. I, I, I can. The map Dave left behind was a hand-drawn sketch of the area. He clearly remembers it showing the lodge at the bottom, which would normally indicate that it lies to their south. But the map isn't laid out in the usual way. To get back to the lodge, they actually need to head north. If we head south, that should take us back. You're sure? <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Okay. Come on, let's go. Hiking south is the worst decision Dave could make. Ahead, there lies nothing but thousands of miles of rainforest. Uninhabited, except for rainforest creatures, many of them highly dangerous. Two hours later, they're getting worried. This way. We had been walking far longer than we should have been. We should have been back by then. There's not much daylight left. It will soon be nightfall. I'm not going to stay out in the forest. I can't let this happen. We have to find our way back before it gets dark. I knew that once it got dark, we, we weren't going to be able to continue. As darkness descends, any chance of finding the lodge today disappears. That's really the first time we started to have some panic. What time is it? It's almost six. We should be back by now. If we'd been walking in the right direction for this long, we would have I know, I know. I don't think he wanted to deal with it. He didn't want to deal with even having to think about sleeping out there. I was frustrated at myself. I felt responsible for getting us lost and felt responsible for finding the way back. Crystal, you know what I'm thinking? We're going to have to spend the night here. Yeah. We just picked a spot to stay, a cleared area, and we just sat down to wait out the night. Chris, I am so sorry about this. I sh It's OK. You buy me a beer when we get back, and we'll call it even, OK? OK. But they both know how vulnerable they really are. The rainforest is teeming with nocturnal predators. A lot of the poisonous snakes, they wander through the forest at night. The jaguar comes out at night. You don't have a lot of choices of protection. Dave and Crystal share a single thought. Can they make it through the night alive? Or is there something out there? The Amazon at night is a terrifying place to be. Dave and Crystal are totally defenseless, with no way to protect themselves from predators. Forty-nine bottles of beer on the wall. We weren't going to try to sleep at all. We were going to stay up, and that way, if something stumbled upon us, we would be ready. Forty-nine bottles of beer. Take one. <laughs> Jeez, did you hear that? Chris, there's something out there. Do you think it could be a jaguar? The Amazonian jaguar stalks its prey under the cover of darkness. It can kill with a single crushing bite to the head. Whatever it was, Dave has scared it off for now.
they spend a sleepless night, alert to every tiny sound. Dave and Crystal have survived the night unscathed, almost. I'm covered in mosquito bites. Be grateful that's all that bit you. <laughs> Very funny. So, what's the plan? Oh. Dave needs to get them back to the lodge fast. Crystal's on medication for her depression, and he knows she doesn't have her drugs with her. She had never missed a day on that medication. This trail heads south, so it should take us right back to the lodge. OK. So we'll be back for breakfast. Yeah. Let's get moving. I truly believe that we were close and we were heading in the right direction. We just had run out of time the night before. It was going to be a breeze. But with every step, they continue to move further away from the safety of the lodge. Four hours later, the temperature in the forest has soared. The heat and the way they're pushing themselves mean that Dave and Crystal are sweating out almost four pints of fluid an hour. We were starting to get depressed about our situation. We were starting to get frustrated. The temperature was rising really fast. It was getting up to 95 degrees. We were sweating profusely. Let's just let's take a break. Dave, I'm out of water. When I realized that we were out of water and it was hot and it was 10 o'clock, I really started to realize things weren't just going to be OK. We knew that we were losing water so quickly and things were not going to function right. Our brain was going to start to trick us and our, our body was going to give out eventually. There's got to be something around here. The irony is that the Amazon Basin is one of the wettest places on Earth. Over nine inches of rain can fall in a single month, leaving puddles of water everywhere. But they face an agonizing dilemma. I didn't know what to do. Should we drink water and possibly get very sick or risk getting very sick from dehydration? I have an idea. Give me that. My plan was to use my sports bra as a filter. OK. And I want you to pour that through the top here. Crystal's bra could actually filter out a number of nasty parasites. But it won't get rid of smaller microorganisms that could make them dangerously ill. OK. Bottoms up. I don't know about this. We don't have a choice. Well, cheers. I took a small sip and kind of let it sit in my mouth for a second to taste it. Tastes OK, kind of chalky. We were both worried about drinking water, but in the end, when it's 95 degrees and you're sweating like that, it's going to be more painful not to drink it. Rehydrated, Dave and Crystal pick up the pace. But they must stay constantly on guard. The forest is alive with creatures that could kill them with a single bite. We're consistently listening to sounds and trying to figure out what was in the forest around us. didn't want to touch a branch that we didn't know what was on that branch. We wanted to watch our steps. We 
Whoa. What is it? A snake. It's going out of way. They're lucky. A few more steps and they could have trodden on the snake. The Amazon Basin is home to some of the most poisonous snakes in the world. One bite could mean a slow and agonizing death. By mid-afternoon, Dave is resorting to a new desperate tactic in his search for the lodge. I was trying to keep us in the same area of where we got lost in, kind of zigzagging back and forth, hoping to stumble upon the trail. Let's, let's try over there. Crystal was starting to get a little bit frustrated with, with that strategy. Dave was literally almost walking in circles and didn't realize that that's what he was doing. Crystal is starting to feel the pressure. My brain was saying, things are going, things are going downhill. Now, which way are we going? East. East? 20 minutes ago, we were going south. Yeah, well, we've got to try all directions. <sighs> maybe, maybe we should head north now. Dave, this is crazy. I can't stand to listen to you talk about directions you know nothing about. You don't know where we're going, and all we're doing is walking around in circles. Dave had kept coming up with a different strategy every few hours whenever one didn't work. And that wasn't working for me. We need to rethink this. All right, then. Well, what do you think? I thought we needed to come up with a strategy and continue using it until the end. That way. Okay. What neither of them realize is the only direction that can help them is north. We chose southeast. We will walk in this one direction for as long as it takes. If it takes us 40 days to get out of here, we're gonna walk southeast. Hours later, and the jungle is just getting denser. We were getting down. We were getting, we were getting scared and worried. I mean, it just looks the same. The jungle is so dense and so thick, you can't see more than a few yards in, in any direction at any one time. Dave has an idea. If he can get up high, he might just be able to see the lodge. The knots in the vine were ripping at my hands and it was hurting me. My arms were tired, I was exhausted. And I looked up and I saw that I, I had not made any progress. It was still 150 feet up to the top. He is weak from two days without sleep or food. Are you okay? Yeah. Did you see anything? Yeah. Rainforest. Why is no one looking for us? In fact, people are looking for them. But the search is focused around the white trail. And that's now a very distant and dense seven miles away. As darkness falls, they realize they must endure another night. I was tired. I had not slept on the previous night. I was being driven insane by the mosquitoes. They were constantly biting me, making our bodies itch, and, and we would scratch it to the point where our bodies would start bleeding. The next day, they're still heading in the wrong direction, getting even further away from the area where rescuers are searching for them. 
And now they start to notice an ominous change in the behavior of the wildlife. If we were anywhere near civilization, these monkeys would be running away from us. They would be fearful of us, that we would hunt them. But these maybe had never seen a human before in their life and were just curious. And that was terrifying that we were getting deeper and deeper. They've stumbled on a pack of wild Amazonian pigs. Dave knows how ferocious they can be. The locals have said that they're really the most dangerous thing to encounter in the, in the forest other than a snake. They're aggressive. If wild boars got a hold of you, it'd probably knock you to the ground quickly, and then you'd have several animals on top of you biting and really just eating and going, going to work. The way to avoid any confrontation is to let them know that you are different, that you are not something that's in their normal habitat. Their encounter with the pigs leaves them jumpy and exhausted. Crystal's feet are badly blistered, and she's been without her antidepressants for three days now. Her depression could return at any time. I can't go on much further, Dave. I'm tired. And my foot. We'll get out of this ravine and we can make camp. I thought that it would be nice, it might even be comforting if we had some type of shelter. So we came up with the idea of making a teepee. Yeah. It was drawing us closer together. She told me that if I was as I was while we were lost, if we had always had that relationship in that past year that we would still be together. She saw all the things that she had fallen in love with in the first place. It looks good. We were trying to get our minds off of what we were going through, and we got even closer. My feelings had not changed since the day I met her. I was still in love with her. I still wanted her to be in my life and, and with me forever. Night falls, and with it comes the nocturnal predator their shelter can't protect them from. Mosquitoes, thousands of them. The worst of it was the sounds. It's just this loud buzzing throughout the night, and you feel like they're everywhere. They would give me mosquito bites on my eyelids if I had my eyes closed, or on my forehead that were just driving me insane. Sleep was increasingly becoming more and more of an issue. And I knew that eventually I'm gonna have to have sleep. I can't go multiple days without sleep. It's gonna drive me insane. In a bid to escape the mosquito onslaught, they come up with a bizarre plan. Crystal said, well, we should cover our bodies in mud. That would work well of keeping the mosquitoes off of us. We got inside the hole and pushed the mud in on top of each other, covered our faces, and we laid there in the mud and tried to be as still as possible. It actually felt pretty comforting laying there, and I felt like I was completely covered. I felt like I was going to be safe from the mosquitoes. I thought it was going to be a great night. 
but Dave couldn't be more wrong. A massive tropical thunderstorm is building in the skies above them. And it's about to put them in the greatest danger yet. Within a few minutes, we were forced out of our hole. We would have drowned there. They've never experienced anything like it. It's very hard to explain how loud it can get. You can't even talk to someone who's right next to you by screaming. That's the only way I can describe how loud it was. They are soaked within seconds. It was the coldest I had ever been. Couldn't stop, my body was just going into convulsions and shaking, and my teeth were chattering. Any hope of sleep is gone. Then, just when they think things couldn't get any worse. <laughs> lightning brings down a huge tree dangerously close to them. If it had landed on us, we surely would have died in that. The storm has shaken Crystal to the core. There's never been a worse night in my life than that night. Their terrible night leaves both of them exhausted and miserable. But it's pushed Crystal close to the edge. For Crystal, that night was really a turning point for her, and she had gone from being, whatever happens, happens, we're gonna get through this challenge to being really fearful of, of, of this being the end of her life and, and dying out there. How you doing? We got through it, didn't we? Yeah. For what? To get home, Chris. Get home, Chris. I just kept thinking about that hellish night I'm not sure I want to. And that I truly would rather die than, than go through it again. What are you talking about? You think we should just slash our wrists right slash here? Wrist right I didn't think what the implications of that were. I didn't think it was a real suggestion. It was just kind of something that I did off the top of my head. That sparked an interest in me that suicide was a possibility and it was a way out. Dave realizes that if they don't find a way out soon, Crystal's suicidal thoughts could become a reality. Chris. Her brain was going through some nasty stuff and, and she, she was feeling the effects of that physically and emotionally. I knew that as the days go on and her withdrawal from her medication gets worse and worse, that it's gonna become very difficult to keep her going and to keep that survival instinct inside her. I was so overwhelmed and so frustrated and so confused that I felt crazy. I felt like I was gonna lose it. Dave, where's the knife? It's here. I want to see it. Chris, you're really freaking me out with this. I want to see it. The knife really became almost a game that I never would let her hold. She would frequently ask me, where is the knife? Can I, can I just see it? I want to know that you haven't lost it. I think my own mind was more dangerous than anything that the jungle had. All I had was a companion, and she was what kept me going. I needed her as much as she needed me to make it through this, and, and I, I could not drag her the, the entire time. 
and that made me quite pessimistic for the outcome. Then, after days of hearing nothing but the sounds of the rainforest. Do you hear that? What? Come on. Come on! Sounds like a boat! Come on! I was saying, come on, Crystal, this is it. We're rescued. Hey, we're over here! There's a boat really close. I can hear it. We're over here! This is over. Hey. Like, just so happy cheering to each other. Yeah, here! Yeah. Do you hear anything? <laughs> then it was nothing. After three nights without sleep, Dave's senses are starting to play tricks on him. Damn. The sound in the jungle can't be trusted. We thought that we were rescued. To have that taken away from us and our hopes just ripped from our hearts, it just killed us. Twenty-four hours later, Dave and Crystal's situation is bleaker than ever. They are still hopelessly lost. And as their fifth night approaches, it's Dave who's struggling. Drained by lack of sleep and the effort of keeping Crystal going, he desperately needs rest. Dave was exhausted. I was very worried about him, but I, there was nothing I could do to make him sleep. Damn it. There was no way I could help him. As Crystal sleeps, Dave is once again tormented by mosquitoes. I could not get a grip. I could not get control of what I really needed, and that was to get to sleep. In his totally exhausted state, the insects soon become an obsession. The only way to get me through that night was to find a way to to keep moving, keep myself occupied. I would go through this pattern of swatting the mosquitoes on my arm, swatting them on my back and my neck, and I'd start counting these cycles. I became obsessed with time. Sleep deprivation is taking its toll. Dave is beginning to lose his grip on reality. I felt like I had lost this battle between me and the mosquitoes, between me and the night, between me and any sleep that I might get. For the first time, Dave thinks they might not make it out of the Amazon alive. A horsefly came and bit me. I reached down and picked up the horsefly. I started to pull off each of its legs. I was just fascinated by it. And it kind of led me to look over at Crystal and imagine our bodies laying there dead and all the things that would come take our bodies apart, eat from our, our flesh and drink from our blood. 
If we were going to die out there, I wanted to have some record of what we went through. So as Crystal was laying there in the sand, I wrote in the sand next door, six day lost. I wanted to document it as well as I could, so I, I'd snap that picture. Hoping that one day, somebody would find our bones and, and our camera and see that, that we had been there on the sixth day. That's when I started to think personally about my life. I did not have a close relationship with my family. I had never told my mother that I loved her. I had never told my family how much they meant to me. It was killing me, and I wasn't going to have that opportunity if I died out there. That thought gives Dave the resolve he needs to keep going. Come on. Wake up. It's time. I don't want to leave. I don't want to move. I don't either, but we have to. My feet were deteriorating unbelievably. And the pain was unbearable. It felt like 10 wasps were biting me at the same time. If we stay here, we die. It's as simple as that. Crystal finds the strength to give it one more try. They push on. Now the terrain gets harder. Come on, Chris. <gasps> and as Crystal's feet become unbearably painful, her depression begins to get the better of her. I couldn't walk anymore. I would try and I would fall down. <laughs> I felt like that was telling me it was time to just end it myself. I don't want to go. <laughs> Crystal's depression is back. Now she can see only one way out of the nightmare. You can! Come on! I decided this is it. I can't keep going! She really meant taking her life into her own hands. I'm going to slash my wrists and take my life and, and put an end to this misery. This was the woman I was in love with. This was the person I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. I, I had no thoughts of ever abandoning her. I'll make you a deal, OK? I'll make you a deal. I told her, you don't want to go through another night. I know that. And if it gets to be tonight and we have not made our way out, I will give you the knife. You gotta give me everything you got today. Crystal accepts Dave's deal. Everything you got today. If they aren't out of the forest by dusk, they will both kill themselves. We'll do it, we'll do it together. <laughs> that put a specific time frame on the rest of our life. We were either going to get out and, and live the rest of our life really happily, or that was going to be the end. Crystal can now see an end to her ordeal. Sit down. Sit down here. On here. Come on. She was like, what time is it? Is it nighttime? Is it getting close enough? But Crystal can't keep going. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
she decides she can't wait until nightfall. She wants them to end their lives now. It's time. When I said it, he agreed. And he said, OK, now let's, we can do it. We were going to have to go through with this. Dave's resigned to dying, but there's a bizarre thought he can't get out of his head. I wanted to wash the mud that was on my arms. I wanted to wash my face and have a clean body, a clean approach. If I was going to face a judgment, I needed to do it with, with a clean spirit as well as a clean body. He begins to search for water to wash himself. As we fought through some of the underbrush, when we got down there, there wasn't a creek. There wasn't a puddle. There was a flooded forest. Everywhere that we could see, there was water. It's a glimmer of hope, just enough to keep them going. This water's got to be somewhere. In the Amazon, rivers are like roads. If this water leads to a river, they might just spot a boat. They put aside thoughts of suicide. I got this surge of energy and some anger that made me want to fight through the water even more. As we were going through the flooded forest, we, we kept telling each other, don't, don't talk about any hopes. Just go, and go as fast as you can. Dave, look! I thought to myself, I've got to be hallucinating. I said, David, am I really seeing that? You know, is that really real? And he said it was. Hey! 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 He didn't wave back at us. It seemed like he was miles away. We immediately just started screaming, help, help, help. Help me, please. He didn't respond. Help. We learned in one split second that we were going to live. I was screaming and crying and just definitely the best moment I've ever had in my life. The sun's setting, the whole sky is bright pink and Dave and I are just looking at each other and the tears, the tears are just running down both of our faces. An inexplainable joy and we just looked at each other and, and, and looked up at the sky essentially and, and we're just so thankful to be alive. Dave and Crystal are incredibly lucky. Their rescuer chanced on them in a waterway that local boats hardly ever use. They find out later that search parties spent four days looking for them. But they never even came close to the remote spot where Dave and Crystal ended up.
When we got out, we talked about, you know, all the times that we had in the jungle and how we talked about getting married, but when we were finally saved and getting better, we realized that that isn't the thing that we're going to do at this time. In the forest, we kind of had said, if we get out of this, we're going to live the rest of our lives together. And, and when the reality of, of being out was there, she did not feel that, that way. That was not what she wanted. Um, and that was a bit of a disappointment to me. Um, and, it, and that continued to be a disappointment for quite some time. Dave and Crystal have both since returned to the Amazon. They never did restart their relationship, but after their six-day death-defying ordeal, they became closer friends than ever. <laughs> 